Hi, I'm Lindsay, and in this video, I'm going to explain how paired end sequencing works. I often get the question whether you should use single or paired end runs, but to answer that question, it's important that you understand how paired end sequencing works. So let's look at the structure details first. When your library is ready, your sequence of interest is connected to adapter and primer sequences. These sequences are necessary for the sequencing reaction itself and to bind to the flow cell. So if your library preparation went well, your starting library will look like this. All your fragments will have a P5 and P7 adapter sequence. When you then start sequencing, these adapters will bind to the complementary oligos on the flow cell surface. And after bridge amplification, there will be clusters of similar sequences. These clusters will be enzymatically cleaved. And it's important to understand that at this step in the sequencing reaction, all bridges will be cleaved at the P5 region. So afterwards, all fragments are attached by the P7 region, regardless of how they bound to the flow cell originally. So now let's look at the actual sequencing. This will start with the addition of the read one sequencing primer. When read one is finished, the read product from read one is removed and the index primer is added. So the index or barcode can be sequenced. If you're doing a single end run, this is where your run ends. Now, if you're doing a paired end run, the read product is removed from the template and the fragment will form bridges again. But this time the P7 region is cleaved. So all fragments are attached by the P5 region. The sequencing primer is going to attach and the second read can be sequenced, if necessary, followed by a second index read if you're using double indexes. And if it's all successful, the analysis can start now and you're one step closer to winning the Nobel Prize for Science. In the next video, I'll tell you more about the benefits of paired end sequencing to help you choose what type of run you should perform to get most out of your experiments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, please like and subscribe. And if you have questions or ideas for new videos, put it in the comments below.